Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Tuesday. Okay, so we're still talking about punctuation. Um, and we know the period, the question mark, the explanation point, the comma. And yesterday we talked about how to show like extreme feeling, intense feeling. You might double up, you might put two question marks or two explanation points or a question mark and an explanation point, right? To show extreme feeling. Well, today we're going to talk about ellipsis. Can you say ellipsis? ellipsis. Okay. You've seen these three dots. Okay. They have been in stories. They've been in lots of stories. Writers use them a lot. Okay. They're called ellipsis. It's a fancy kind of word for three dots, but it's a type of punctuation mark, believe it or not. It is a row of three dots. No more, no less. Always three dots. So if they're using them correctly, it has to be three dots. It can't be four dots. It can't be if you want a longer pause, you use three dots and you don't really use two dots, okay? And then you don't use one dot because that means it's a period, okay? It has to be the three dots, okay? Now, how are they read? How we read these three ellipses, <laughs> these three dots right here. Um, when we see them, we take a pause, but longer than a comma pause, okay? You know, period stop, commas are short pause. This one's a pause. Sometimes it's like dramatic pause. I'm gonna show you why we use them, okay? But it is a pause, but it's longer. And sometimes to be silly, I might even say dot, 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 or dun, dun, dun. But really when you're reading them, it's just a longer pause. So they are used to create suspense. Show hesitation. That means like you're not sure. Um, unfinished sentence, your, your sentence isn't complete. Or interruption, like they're interrupting you um, or just a silent response. Like someone doesn't even know what to say. So they just go dot, dot, dot. Like they don't even know, they have no words. Okay. So suspense. Okay. So here's our little, we're going to use this story about Miss Summers taking tacos. Yeah. Cause she loves taco Tuesdays and it's Tuesday. So um, the suspense factor, and that's kind of what the story we're going to read today. The, the ellipses are going to be there for some suspense too. Um, so reading this sentence, I know who took the cookies. It was Miss Summers, right? Suspense, you're kind of like, ooh, who took them, right? Those three dot dots, it's a longer pause. It was Miss Summers. All right, there she is with her tacos. Now, hesitation is like, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm thinking about it. So you see how there's three, there's two ellipses here. There's three dots there and three dots at the end. So it's like kind of breaks up the sentence here. It's like, I, listen for my pauses here. I don't know for sure, but uh, I think it was Miss Summers. Right, so I'm hesitating. I'm, I'm not necessarily sure of it, okay? So I'm not too sure, but I think it was Miss Summers. Let's see, unfinished sentence. So sometimes this might be, um, they're kind of like tailing off. They're, they're just like not completing it. So if, listen to this, you might, this might make more sense. If I'm thinking, hmm, if only we knew who took all the tacos, right? It's almost like I want a response, but like I'm, if only we knew who took all the tacos, right? If the sentence isn't complete there. I, it's almost like I know who took it, but are they gonna say anything? Now an interruption, right? Sometimes you might see this in writing where the character's talking and then dot, 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 and someone talks over them. Um, it's kind of like I saw, I'm interrupting Miss Summers. I saw her catching the, um, eating the tacos, but I think I know it took all the tacos. It was Miss Summers, right? There I am, I'm like interrupting, like it was Miss Summers. Um, and then here's what I was talking about, that silent response, okay? All right, so pretend I'm yelling. I yelled, Mrs. Summers, you took all the tacos. And then Mrs. Summers, is she replying there? She's kind of like, kind of like you can see in her face, like, yeah, she did, we caught her. But her response is kind of just silent. So sometimes they might respond with just the dot, 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 the ellipsis and kind of be like, Right, like we're kind. It kind of says a lot of how she's feeling. She's like, "Yeah, you caught me," but she's not saying anything. She's without words. She's like, mm, "Yeah." So sometimes it can be a silent response of those three dot dots. Um, the story we're gonna read. Oh, okay. So when we see the ellipsis, we take a pause longer than a comma pause. And I might be silly sometimes and say dot dot dot, but we normally just read them as a longer pause. Okay. So in the story, creepy carrots. Yeah, we might have some suspense going. Okay, you're going to see the ellipsis, the three dots, ellipsis a lot in here. Okay, so creepy carrot words. Um, so it was written by Aaron Reynolds and the pictures by Peter Brown. Okay, all right, there's a rabbit eating carrots. Cool, cool. Jasper Rabbit had a passion for carrots. 
and the carrots that grew in crack and hopper field were the best. Fat, crisp, and free for the taking. He pulled some for a morning snack on the way to school. He yanked them out of a fuel on his way to little league practice. He ripped them from the ground on his way home at night. Okay, so this rabbit, he's always eating carrots, okay. Jasper couldn't get enough carrots. Okay, so see this, see the ellipsis right there, right? It's almost like it's a, it's a, the sentence isn't finished. We're gonna have to go to the next page for that sentence to finish, okay? So it's just kind of tailing off. It's, a, it's not complete, okay? So there's the ellipsis. Jasper couldn't get enough carrots until they started following him. Ooh, that's how that sentence finished. That's so scary, right? So it was an unfinished sentence and how it was completed until they started following him. Creepy, creepy. Okay, oh, he's thinking about it. He's pulling those carrots and he's thinking. <sighs> he first noticed something strange after the big game against the East Valley Hares. Jasper was about to help himself to a victory snack when he heard it. Here's the pauses. The soft, sinister, tunk, tunk, tunk of carrots creeping. Do you see how I put that pause there? It's like mysterious, right? Suspenseful. There's a lot of ellipses on there. He turned, but there was nothing there. Suspense, suspense. These ellipses here. Just my imagination, he thought, but he hopped a little faster. Now, I think I've seen this in other stories before. I'm trying to think of the little old lady wasn't afraid of anything. She kept saying I wasn't, she wasn't afraid of anything. Do you remember like way back in October? But she started moving a little bit faster. She started getting quicker home, right? So he's hopping a little faster, meaning he's trying to tell himself it's just his imagination, but he is a little afraid right now. So he wants to get home. That night, as he was brushing his teeth, there they were. Did you see, did you hear that pause? So there's the ellipsis there. That night, as he was brushing his teeth, there they were. <gasps> Jasper whipped around, but nothing. Oh, I didn't read that with enough pause yet. Jasper whipped around, but nothing. He laughed at himself, picked his toothbrush off the, fl the floor and went to bed quickly. Okay, so that, fin that sentence like hadn't needed a break there. Like he, you're trying to show like he went to bed, but, but quickly he did. So were they the carrots? Or was it just an orange washcloth, shampoo, and a duck? Hmm, interesting. The next morning, he approached Krakenhopper Field slowly. Okay, so that's where he was getting his carrots from, right? He reached for two wild carrots. Nothing happened. He bit into one. Nothing happened. Phew! Creepy carrots. It was ridiculous. You see that pause that I did right there, right? So like, creepy carrots. It was ridiculous. Come on. Come on, yeah, that, that's not happening. Here's some more suspense. But when he arrived home that evening, ah, oh, mom, Jasper screamed, creepy carrots in the shed. Do you see, so that was like in the shed. Shed's like a word for like a little, little, almost like bigger than a closet, like your outside closet, right? Um, outdoors where you keep my tools and stuff. So he thinks he see carrots in there, does he? His mom opened the door slowly. There weren't any carrots, not even the regular kind. There are no such thing as creepy carrots, mom said, shaking her head like, oh my goodness, my son's imagination. Do you notice the orange things there? There was paint, uh, maybe clippers, right? So he's thinking he sees carrots, but does he really see carrots? Oh, there's some comments. Later that night, as Jasper lay in bed, he heard it, breathing, terrible carroty breathing. And there on his wall, oh, what was it? Yeah, it was just a pot. Right, he's got a bad imagination right now. Creepy carrots, he shouted, dad, dad. His dad thumped into his bedroom and threw on the light. He start, they searched under the bed, no creepy carrots. They looked through the closet, no creepy carrots. They opened the dresser drawers, no creepy carrots. So they're searching everywhere, they can't find anything. Just a bad dream, son, his dad said, shaking his head, now go to sleep. That wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> By the end of the week, Jasper was seeing, okay, so take a look at this picture, but look at the difference. Creepy carrots creeping everywhere, but they're not, or are they? Jasper knew his parents were, were wrong. Creepy carrots were real and they were coming for him, but they couldn't get him. 
if they couldn't get out. Okay, so here's like this break in the sentence here, like, but they couldn't get him if they couldn't get out. Yeah, okay. Jasper hatched a plan. First thing on Saturday, he grabbed supplies and headed to Krakenhopper Field. Okay, so that's where the carrots are. What's he doing? He's like digging around there, he's watering them. He's, oh, is he building like a fence? As the sun finally set across Krakenhopper Field, Jasper Rabbit smiled. What's he smiling for? Mm -hmm. My goodness, there's crocodiles in that moat, in that like small river before, oh my goodness. On his way home, there was no tunk, tunk, tunk. There were no carrot shaped shadows. His plan had work. No creepy carrots would ever get out of that carrot patch again. Yeah, but isn't that where he got his food from? Look at the carrots. And as, as the sun finally set, the carrots of Krakenopper Field, here's this like unfinished sentence, right? We have the ellipsis right there. Okay, so as the sun finally set, the carrots of Krakenhopper Field cheered. Wait, what? They're cheering. Wait, are these carrots real? They're cheering. What are they cheering for? Huh, what are they cheering for? Their creepy plan had worked. They were sure of it. Jasper Rabbit would never get into that carrot patch ever again. Oh, they were tired of being eaten by him. Oh, okay. So now he like patched them in. He can't even get in, right? Ha! Huh. That was the end. The carrots won. They were kind of creeping him out, but look how happy they are. They're not scary at all. They just don't want to be eaten anymore. Good for you, carrots. Okay, and Jasper went in. There was a lot of suspense in that book, a lot of the ellipsis in there, right? And the kind of not finished sentence or the hesitation in there. So keep an eye out for them. Now, remember, I always say this after I think the little marks are powerful. Do not ignore them, right? But when you see the three three, three dots in your, in your stories, okay, the writer put them there for, for different reasons. Make sure you give them the good pause. Okay, right? Make sure you give them that pause. Longer than the comma pause, but make sure you give them that pause. Because you've got to add that suspense. Okay. All right. So be on the lookout. I want to know kind of, did you, will you find any ellipsis, three dots in your stories today when you're reading? Give it the pause. Okay. Um, I'll catch you back here on Thursday. Bye.